So section 5.6 is our last set of eukaryotic microbes, the helminths, which are worms. These are animals. They're multicellular. And truthfully, they're not really microscopic. They're rather mac macroscopic. But how they're transmitted and the diseases that they can cause, it is infectious. Um, it's kind of an infectious disease, and they're transmitted by food or water. So we're going to look at the two major groups of helminths and provide examples representing each body type and summarize the stages. I'm not going to really get into much of the life cycle part. Okay, so the helminths, they contain two major groups, the flatworms and the roundworms. And the flatworms are phylum platyhelminthes. Helminthes is a worm. Platy means flat. So this is a flatworm. It's like, think about a a platypus has a flat bill, and um, so anyway, platy means flat. And so platys are flatty, and we have tapeworms and flukes are included in this. So the tapeworms are segmented flatworms, and the flukes are non-segmented flatworms. And this was uh, fasciola hepatica, one that we looked at under the microscope in lab three. Um, and we looked at parts of the, the um, tapeworm, tinea solium, was what we looked at in the lab three. Nemohelminthes, Nema roundworms, also called nematodes, are really long roundworms, and they're not segmented. And they can be from one millimeter to 25 meters in length, so that's really long. Um, Platyhelminthes can be, like the tapeworms, can be very long as well. And platy, you know, these, these flatworms, like tapeworms, they hook on with these suckers to the intestines, and they'll grow as long as the food is being provided to that. They'll keep adding segments. And the, the thing about these, they can take up a lot of the small or large intestines of the mammals that they infect. And Typically, they do infect any kind of mammal, and a whale is a mammal, and there's even tapeworms for mammals like that. Um, so whales can get them, pigs can get them, dogs can get them, um, and then we ingest. Now, we're not ingesting dogs. I'm just saying we um, come into contact with the eggs and then swallow them if we don't wash our hands after we're petting our dogs and if they have tapeworms. So... Um, flukes a lot of times are in food or water and the way that we get them are another kind of thing, another thing altogether. So the general worm um, morphology, they're multicellular animals. They have a very, very developed reproductive tract. That's how they, they're, they're going to reproduce all the time in order to make sure that they survive. Um, that's their reproductive strategy is that they reproduce a lot and then the more they reproduce, the more they are um, able to survive. So they have a primitive digestive system, an excretory system, nervous system, muscular systems, thick cuticles for protection, mouth glands for breaking down host tissue. So they, they really are very complex. They are, they are animals. Um, they're invertebrates, but they're animals. And so the life cycles, they have an egg, a larval stage, and an adult. And uh, so the egg is usually how we get them. And then they become a larva stage. Um, sometimes the larval stage is what invades us, though. And um, that comes through the water. And then they develop into the adult stage within the host. So the majority of the helminths get their nutrients and reproduce sexually inside the host's body. So the life cycles and reproduction... You're not going to really get tested on this, but people always have this question about hermaphrodites. And so the worms are generally going to have the hermaphrodites. This is where we see a lot of hermaphroditic organisms. And trematodes, the flukes, the ones that are uh, non-segmented, they look like a leaf shape. They have a leaf shape to them. Um, they have male and female sex organs, organs in the same worm. And so they can either use the male or female sex organ when they um, go through copulation. Um, cestodes uh, also can be hermaphroditic. Nematodes have, the roundworms have different more sexes, so they're male and female. 
Um, but generally, again, the, ta the tapeworms are hermaphroditic. Sometimes they'll have male and female um, sexes, though. So the tapeworms are cestodes, the flukes are the trematodes, and again, the difference between these is the flukes are not segmented and the tapeworms are segmented. And that's really the main thing that I ask um, from this part of the chapter is just how do we differentiate the different groups. So it's like their shape, are they round or flat, and then are they segmented or non-segmented. So the general life cycle, again, the transmission is either the egg or the larva, and then there's sometimes an intermediate host where the larva develops and then either the, that if they have this intermediate host then the larva is what actually ends up in the definitive or final host which is you maybe um, so that is their life cycles it can be in food soil and water and infected animals um, so they can come in through unbroken skin or they are eaten or drink, you drink or eat, so oral intake. Humans are the definitive host for many species and the sole biological reservoir for about half of the diseases. Animals or insect vectors can also serve as reservoirs. So there's a lot of examples. Um, pinworms are probably the most common here in the United States. Um, this is a round worm that's very, very tiny and um, kids will get this so we'll probably talk a little bit more about that. And then there's some others, Oncocerca vulvus, Dracunculus metanensis. Um, so that's river blindness and guinea worms. And it tells like how they are, who's the host and how they can be ingested usually as, or bite of a fly. Um, so that's just a little bit about them. The schistosoma is one of the ones that we looked at. It's the blood liver fluke um, or blood fluke. And you get that from the fresh water and walking through flooded waters in Egypt. <laughs> this is typically where we see this or in other countries where there's a lot of flooding. The snails will have the, the larval form. The larva is actually what invades, goes through the skin. But you can also ingest it. Um, cestodes like pork tapeworm, um, that's very common in the United States too. And that's because people like undercook or eat raw or undercooked pork. So it's really important to cook your food um, to a proper temperature, hot enough that it kills any kind of egg form of these. Um, and then fish tapeworm, you can get this from eating uncooked or raw fish, again like sushi. So diphilobothrum latum. Isn't that fun? So you don't have to say these names. <laughs> um, you do have to know the pictures of some of these that we looked at. The um, some of these that we looked at, the flukes that we looked at in um, the schistosoma and the tinea solium, the trematodes and the and the tapeworms, the cestodes, in lab three. But you don't have to actually spell them out because I just have you match them with the proper one in the test. So this pinworm though is very interesting to people because Enterobius vermicularis is the pinworm. It's very small, two to 12 millimeters, but um, it is one of those infections that spreads and you can reinfect yourself. So like a, a kid will um, swallow it by putting their fingers in their mouth and it's usually um, they've gotten it from a friend and or they put their mouth they put toys in their mouth that have the eggs so somehow they have um, ingested the egg and then when they um, defecate um, the fecal the fecal matter has um, the eggs in it and if they scratch uh, their bottom with if they don't clean their bottom very well they can scratch their bottom and then reinfect themselves by putting their hands in their mouth. So they need to make sure that they wipe well. And after going number two, and we need to teach them to wash their hands and sing the happy birthday song. Um, and we need to make sure we clean toys off very well. And um, because it can spread very quickly in different types of settings with lots of children. So preschools in particular, are this will go around in preschool settings. So a lot of times um, they need to clean the toys, disinfect the toys after the end of the day. Um, I don't know how much that is actually done, 
Um, I don't work in a daycare, but this is one of those issues. And also you shouldn't have a lot of furry organisms or uh, furry toys, toys that like stuffed animals or something like that, because the eggs can get in there and then it's a lot harder to clean. So the classification, they do look at the shape, like the, whether it's flat or round and the segmented, non-segmented, they look at size, presence of different development organism organs, and then suckers or hooks, those specialized mouth structures, modes of rep reproduction, kinds of hosts, and the appearance of egg or larva. And then, um, so they can look at them microscopically, but eggs are really hard stage to be able to identify them. And occasionally they're cultured to verify all the life stages. So that's that. Um, so we have a lot of these. There's worldwide, there's quite a few. There's about 50 species that parasitize humans. Um, uh, but yearly worldwide case numbers of these are like in the billions, even though there's only like 50 species. And it's projected or a conservative estimate is there's about 50 million infections in the North America alone. And um, humans are in the constant presence of helminths. And so um, only recently have humans evolved into a helminth free existence. And so that is um, why we see them infecting us so much. But uh, the absence of helminth infections may contribute to autoimmunity and allergies. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things you just have to kind of develop an immunity to these things uh, early on. So here's a summary of the variation of eukaryotes from protozoans um, to algae and fungi and elements in humans and the level of complexity, whether they have a cell wall or not, cytoplasm, um, if it's divided or not divided, and nutritional type, heterotrophs or autotrophs, motility, what do they use to move around, um, important structures for identification. So, um, so chloroplasts, and then I would say like pigmentation <coughs> would be the thing for algae, um, the type of spores for fungi, um, the different modes of motility for protozoans, and helminths, it would be their shape and whether they're segmented or not. But this is um, a summary of everything from this particular chapter. So our concept check question, difference, uh, describe the differences between nematodes, cestodes, and trematodes. In helminths, the most developed organ system is the blank system. Some helminths are blank, having both male and female organs. And true or false, some helminths produce millions of eggs to overcome a high mortality rate of ova. So the first question, nematodes, again, are the round worms, not segmented. Cestodes are the um, tapeworms, and they are flat and segmented. Trematodes are flat, not segmented. They look like a leaf. So kind of an oval um, football kind of shape to them. In helminths, the most developed organ system is the reproductive system uh, because that's how they overcome the higher mortality rate of uh, the mortality rate of the ova. So that again, question four, some of the helminths produce millions of eggs. That is true. Um, and some helminths are blank, having both male and female organs. That's hermaphroditic. And that is the end of chapter five.